Welcome back everybody, it's Bronson with the Epoxy Resin Store. Today I'm gonna to show you one of my favorite techniques. We call it our soap sun technique. Super simple to use, there's a ton of different options for you, I can't wait to show you. All right, starting out, we're gonna go with a substrate. This technique works on any different color substrate. I happen to have a light colored substrate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fog it with the colors that I'm gonna be using on top first. So the colors I'm using this time are satin charcoal gray, smoke gray, and then I'm going to use a hammered brown in this. Starting out, I'm gonna shake up my cans and we're gonna lightly fog our surface with these. Now my fat fingers are hitting this and getting a little bit of drops on there. I'm not gonna worry about that. It's not gonna affect our technique, but we will be peeking through at different points and you will see through to the substrate. So it's important to get a good fog on it so that you don't have like a stark white sticking out. Get our gray on there. And here comes our smoke gray, just lighting things up a little bit. All right, I like that. We're gonna mix up our epoxy now. All right guys, once again, we're using super gloss, our favorite. For a for, uh, square foot board, it's gonna be 12 ounces. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more, I'll go by 14. It's a good measure just to have a little bit more than you need um, without going crazy. You guys already know I like to pour B before I pour A. So I got seven ounces of B. Get our seven ounces of A in here real quick. Now that I've got my epoxy poured, we're just gonna give you a good mix. Mix, take your time. Uh, this is a crucial step to make sure that your two parts are uh, incorporated well so that we end up with a good result. It's a little colder in here today than usual. We've had the air conditioner running here in Vegas. It's been hot outside, so we kind of blast a little colder. So my epoxy is a little thicker, so I'm gonna take the time just to mix it up. Remember when you're mixing to scrape your sides and hit your bottom as well so that you have everything mixed up. All right guys, I got the epoxy mixed up. With this, we're not doing anything special. We're not tinting it, anything. All that effect is on our board, pre-fogging it. At this point, I'm gonna take it. We're just gonna pour clear epoxy directly onto our substrate. Let my cup drain out. All right, now we've got the epoxy. I'm just gonna use my hand and I'm gonna spread it over the board here. This is a small piece, so I'm just gonna use my hand. If you've got a uh, bigger piece, like your big countertop or a table or something like that, go ahead and trowel it out. You'll do, uh, it'll make your life a lot easier and it helps you distribute the uh, material in the, in the appropriate way. All right, for this I'm using a couple different colors, uh, some contrasting grays and then a brown. I want this to be kind of an earthy uh, feel. I'll go ahead and link all, all of the materials that I used in this in the description below, so feel free to look there. All right, my favorite thing about this is we get to use our hands on this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start out. I've got my smoke gray here. I'm gonna fog the entire surface of my, of my piece right here. I'm gonna get a nice coat on. All right, now I've got my contrasting gray and this goes to my charcoal gray, which is a little darker. I'm gonna spray that on top as well. I'm actually gonna make some stripes here to break it up a little bit. All right, and then my last color, which is a hammered brown. It's gonna be a little bit of a, a different effect on here. Just like I did the charcoal gray, I'm gonna just kind of push it in 
And these colors don't show as much, but they make a nice good overtone, undertone I should say. And they do add a little bit of shine in there. So let me get that on there nice and, and covered here. As you can see, so my board's covered now. Now in this part, I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna push down on the surface where I'm pushing everything out. I'm just gonna lightly skim the top of the surface and incorporate these, okay? All right, when you do this, it's important to start off your piece and go all the way off and then back on. So you have these streaks that match up. Now guys, you can mix up the colors on this. You could make it a marble. You could go blacks and whites. You can, there's just so many options. The same technique over and over again. We'll just give you some cool looks. So I start, I'm coming back up here. All right, the fun thing about this is I get to look at this now and I go, hmm, there's a little bit spotty here. It's a little more than I want. So, and it's a little darker than I want. So I'm gonna get the uh, smoke gray, which is my lighter of the grays. And I'm gonna go ahead and coat over the top once again. And you'll see, we can just keep layering these on until we get the effect that we like. So that's on there. So once again, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna lightly uh, drag my finger across the top and I'm gonna start off the board and I'm gonna go all the way on. It's just like that. So we've added some more pigment to our, our top there. Back and forth, back and forth. down all right you can see i've got a lot of that white and it'll cover up too as as we have some movement and i'll show you how we're going to move this to get a a real natural look to it all right i do like that i'm gonna add a little accents so here's a fun part of this so i'm gonna take my my hammer brown i'm just gonna put a dab there dab there and then you're hitting just that spot we're gonna go back and forth and you can see it adds it in there Take out that, which is just a little bit over that spot right there. It gives me that brown highlight in the middle. Then we'll put one right here as well. Woo! I should be wearing a respirator right now, but it's really hard to talk to you while I do this. Normally, um, I would be. So there's that. You can see it's already starting to sit out. They'll start to uh, fight with each other. Now, finishing touch that I like to do is similar that we did to the brown. So I take just a little bit of black. I'm gonna put a dot here. We'll do a dot here. And then we're just gonna come across just like that. It's gonna add just some veining in there and some contrast. It looks really pretty. And I think that's good right there. All right, now that I've got that, I'm gonna torch it out real quick. Once again, our favorite one, pass for glass, super glass. Here we go. All right, to further embellish this, I've got 90% isopropyl alcohol in here that I've taken some red mica and I put in heavily. I put a lot of it in that I mix up. I'm gonna go with a, uh, a medium spray density. So when it hits, I got a little bit of pattern and I'm, I'm not gonna coat the whole thing. I'm gonna do a little in the corner. This is gonna be an accent flavor. I'm just gonna hit there and you'll see how it um, will react with the paint there. Sells out a little bit and then I'm gonna hit here a little bit heavier and then give that about five minutes and let it sell out. Um, and you're gonna get some really cool effects with this red on top of it. As you come across, it adds additional depth and dimension as the light hits it that really takes it over the top. You're gonna love it. All right, if you notice from the isopropyl alcohol, it does open up the epoxy and I'll see through to the bottom. 
Um, some people don't like this. I don't mind it, but if you don't like it, just tap it out with your finger like that. It'll cover it right back up. And you won't see through to the bottom like that. So that, the, almost the final step, I'm gonna let this sit, I'm gonna flow it out, and then we're gonna come back to it. All right, the final thing that I'm gonna do to this soap tone technique is you notice we've got really straight lines here. In nature, it's not real straight all the time. It's usually curvy, and so I'm just gonna pick the board up and we're just gonna give it a bit of a tilt and let the resin move just a little bit with gravity. You can see it's starting to do its thing there. And that'll help us just to get some real asymmetrical looks and bring that pattern out. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna let that, let that set up. Um, and then we'll come back to this tomorrow. We'll put a top coat on it and that'll be the finish of it. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make soapstone. There's lots of different techniques. Go ahead and try it out. As a special reminder, if you enjoyed it and you found value, do us a favor. We don't ask for any money, but we ask you to pay us in a different way in return. Like what you saw, subscribe to it, and ring the bell so next time when we have a video, you're the first to hear about it. Hope to see you next time.